One of the fundamental and most important concepts in economics is called elasticity, but it can be difficult to understand. So in this video, I wanna help you get an intuitive grasp of what elasticity means. And I'm gonna do it using an exercise band. Once you understand the intuition behind this, you're gonna be a better economist, a better policymaker, even a better parent. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power, where we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. And once you understand that power, you're gonna be able to see the consequences of the choices we make, which will help you make meaningful changes in your community and in your personal life. One of the things we like to talk about in economics is elasticity. And before you click away, because now I'm on this jargony topic, I want you to understand that elasticity is really this important idea that if you understand what it means, you're going to be able to describe the world around you so much better. It actually comes into play in things that we do in public policies like taxation, tariffs. Uh, it happens in business when we're thinking about prices. Elasticity should make you think elastic. And if you think elastic, you probably think of like a rubber band or maybe an exercise band. And if that's what comes to mind, that's exactly what is intended. You're supposed to think about these things. Before we get into the economic explanation, let me just ask you, how could we tell which of these two bands is more elastic? Like, what does that mean to you? Of course, more elastic doesn't mean which one stretches more. That's, you know, I can get both of these bands to stretch the same amount. The question really applies to how do they stretch under the same application of force? So we're gonna go ahead and test which one is more elastic with this little dumbbell. This is just a five pound dumbbell and we're gonna see which one stretches more under the five pound weight. You can see that when they start off, they're about the same length, but as you put the five pound weight on each one, they respond differently. The yellow band stretches much farther than the blue one does. We would say that the yellow band is more elastic than the blue band because under the same force, the yellow band stretches farther. Hopefully that idea makes total sense to you. And now let's take it to economics. Instead of thinking about this weight as just an arbitrary force, let's think about this as a price change. Let's say this five pound weight represents a drop in price. Instead of saying these elastic bands are just arbitrary elastic bands, let's pretend that they're actually goods. We'll say that the yellow is bananas and the blue is blueberries. And the length of the elastic bands at any point is how many people want that product under that price. Now we're gonna bring in that five pound weight as a price drop. And what we see is that the yellow band, the bananas, stretches more than the blue band. Remember the length of the band is the quantity demanded and so, for the same price drop, the quantity demanded increased more for bananas than it did for blueberries. In this case, we would say the demand for bananas is more elastic than the demand for blueberries. So we can see that there's actually a pretty close analog between the physics explanation and the economics explanation. They're both looking at how sensitive something is to a change in force. In physics, the force is weight. In in economics, the force is a change in price. Now let's think about demand curves, which we love to draw in economics. And let's think about what the demand curves for these two products would look like. So they both start at the same price and the same quantity demanded. So they're gonna be both represented by this single point right here. And they both have the same price drop. So we know both of them are gonna be around this line right here but the quantity for bananas went higher than the quantity for blueberries. We're gonna represent that dot for bananas over here and the dot for blueberries over here. And then we can just draw a line connecting these points and we can see that the slope for blueberries is steeper than the slope for bananas. You can usually recognize the elasticity of demand through the slope of that demand curve. The steeper that curve, the less elastic the demand is. In fact, what if we were to say the demand was perfectly inelastic? For the perfectly inelastic case, I wanna think of this tie strap. Like tie straps are meant to hold heavy things in place on moving vehicles. This is not supposed to stretch at all. And we can see that here. We're gonna put that tie strap on the same level as the elastic band, and then we're gonna apply the same price change or the same force in this case. And what we see is we see that drop in the elastic band, but we're not seeing any drop at all with the tie strap. So when we look at the demand curve, we start at that same initial point, but then when we drop the price, 
it's the same quantity. There's no change. And so we just go straight down, we connect that, and we have a vertical line. That's what completely inelastic demand or supply looks like, is just a vertical line. So how does understanding elasticity make you a better economist or policymaker? Well, let's think of a policy like a tax on vaping. We want to discourage people from vaping, and so what we'll do is put a tax on it. If we want a certain amount of discouragement, if we want to change the quantity, we're going to increase the price. But how much do we have to increase that price to get the desired change? That's a question about elasticity. This applies to any taxes. Anytime we're thinking about taxes, we have to be thinking about elasticity and how people are going to respond to that tax. That response is completely governed by elasticities. If you're interested in more about elasticities, check out the video I made about who actually pays tariffs because elasticities come into effect in that video. Keep your eye open for them.